Thank you very much indeed, and the warmest possible welcome to all of you who are here live with us at the Green Space in downtown Manhattan, to those listening live on WQXR, and to all of you watching all around the world, hopefully, via our live web stream. This is such an incredibly exciting and special event. We are here to celebrate someone who, you know, casually performs for people like presidents and queens and popes. And now he's here exclusively to perform for us at the Green Space, and we could not be more thrilled. Please join me in giving the warmest possible welcome to the one and only Lang Lang. everybody. I'm going to be very mean and make Lang Lang sit at the piano and almost immediately get to work. Um, but before we hear from you, Lang Lang, on the piano, I want to uh, ask you a few questions. First of all, thank you again for being with us. We're here to celebrate the launch of your new album, which is called Piano Book. And that sees you reconnecting to your past and going back to your first love, the pieces that you say made you want to be a musician in the first place. So perhaps you can tell us a bit more about the genesis of this album and why you chose to embark sure. upon this particular project. Thank you for your kind words and uh, thank you so much for coming in. Today's uh, like a raining day. Uh, we even have some music like that <laughs> later. Um, <coughs> so um, this album is some, something that I always wanted to, to do because I wanted to, to um, record everything that uh, I really care and I love so much. Uh, since when I'm a, a child and growing up. Um, and another thing is that uh, when I was a kid, I was always looking for some kind of uh, reference on recordings. And then uh, somehow the uh, professional pianist, normally they don't like to record those pieces because it's kind of uh, considered to be kind of simple pieces or like beginner uh, beginner's pieces. But you know, it really changed my my view when I was four already, when I watched uh, Vladimir Horowitz in Moscow. And he played a lot of great, great stuff. But there's only one piece I remember so well was the Schumann Tremorai. And I thought, you know, even my neighbor can play that, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> but the, the Horowitz played with such a color, with such a... Uh, incredible sound and with the, the you know the the whole thing is just magical and I thought it was a kind of complete another piece and that moment I thought okay I should record those pieces when I grow up um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and here we are and we're incredibly grateful that you have done yeah. because <laughs> it is a real treasure trove of gems it is full of some of the most beloved and in a way familiar pieces that we know, and these are pieces that sometimes enter the mainstream discourse, if you like. They enter the popular bloodstream of life, uh, and without people necessarily even realizing what they are. Uh, Für Elise, for example, that bagatelle by Beethoven, you famously said, it's not just a ringtone. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, I know the ringtone's always taking that. You know, it's, maybe, you, you know, Beethoven will get a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of rights for that, you know. <laughs> yeah, but it's really incredible piece. It's almost like a, a uh, kind of a uh, kind of the beginnings of ideas of a great Beethoven symphony. You know, it's a it's a real great piece. And when you were four, five, six years old, and you were studying these pieces, to what degree, Lang Lang, were you aware of that? How were you approaching them even then? At uh, that time, not so much because I I just started to play scales and just start to to put my uh, foot on the pedal, uh, and so you know, so it's kind of a beginner's. Uh, skill. But I try to play with my heart, even though maybe my heart was small, but uh, <laughs> you know, I was trying. <laughs> now your heart is very, very big. Could you possibly demonstrate for us the sort of difference when you're approaching Beethoven without thinking about it with so much heart? To sure, how I you mean, like when I was a kid, more like this. You know, the ringtone I, you know, addition, <laughs> you know. I and did then, say to turn off your cell phones, guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, somebody's calling you. Yeah, and then, <laughs> of course, and after you, you know, you you know more. It sounds more like this. And also, you know, 
this thing comes like at least twelve times. So every time we should play slightly different. Um, yeah. How do you think about music when you're performing? What's going on in your mind? And when you recreate a piece that you know so well, is it different every time? Mm. I try to play the same piece very differently every time, uh, or at least a little different. So we're uh, getting a world premiere tonight, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> and, uh, um, and also when I, when I play, of course, the first thing comes is uh, the music score uh, in front of my uh, kind of mind. But then, of course, on top of that, we have to have a multi-functional uh, uh, screens uh, with uh, you know, story telling you're like kind of like a movie director uh, and then you know think about characters um, the mood um, and the the turning points um, um, the whole structure of the movie um, and and also you see colors you're kind of like you're touching a, a chord and then this gives you different type of uh, colors in front of you yeah. beautiful uh, tell us very quickly because it's you know, this vast canon of music to choose from. How did you go about deciding what was going to end up in the album? Um, that, that's a really, uh, um, really quite hard work because we don't want an album like a kind of a compilation, you know. We're more like a musical journey type of uh, 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 recordings. So we did not put fast, slow, fast, slow. That's like when I play encores, I always play a fast piece and a slow piece and kind of rotate. But for this, we, we like to have a kind of a theme. So kind of like the springtime, summer. No, I'm just joking. So <laughs> it's more like, um, y you know, there. for example, the French ones are together. Uh, and then there's uh, um, the, the Clementi, Cherny, you know, uh, and the, those kind of, uh, uh, and Bach Prelude, and so I'm trying to group them you know, into the same sections. Well, it is yeah. the most fabulous musical mix. We're very lucky we're going to be dipping into that mix this evening. Uh, we'll hear in this little tranche of pieces, we'll hear music by Mozart, we'll hear The Maiden's Prayer, which is a very familiar piece that many young pianists uh, learn when they're very young, and you're gonna start us off with that ringtone. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Lang Lang. <laughs>
so much, Lang Lang, performing the Bagatelle number 25 in A minor by Ludwig van Beethoven, commonly known as Für Elise. And next we're going to hear The Maiden's Prayer by Tekla Barajewska Baranowska. <laughs> Thank you. 
performing for us live at the Green Space. That was the Maiden's Prayer. Tekla Badajewska Balanowska performed by Lang Lang, who will now treat us to the Allegro from the Piano Sonata number 16 in C major by Mozart. Sonata number 16 in C major, Kirkle 545, known as the Sonata Facile, or Easy Sonata, easy for Lang Lang to say. Uh, Lang Lang, that was the first piece that you really played in public. You were five years old, it was your first recital, your first competition. How did it go? Um, yeah, it went well. Uh, not as good as today. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but that piece was also the first piece for me to go into the studio to record. And I still remember that studio in my home city in Shenyang. And it was a dark day, uh, and I didn't do well. Um, and then I, was, I recorded like 20 times. I still play bad, simply bad. Um, but somehow, you know, and I, s I sleep over with it. And the day after I, I came back, it was good after. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, if you don't feel good in the studio, you know, you have a second chance. It's not like in concert, you know. Uh, so. <laughs>
I felt so incredibly lucky to be sitting there able to watch your face as you were playing that and the incredible story and narrative that was being woven just by your expression and the idea of newly minting pieces that we know so well, that are so familiar, which is really the basis of this project. How does it feel for you to come back to a piece like that in this kind of environment and create something perfectly new for us? Uh, really fresh, I would say. You know, because now I play this piece, I, I, I'm kind of uh, uh, trying to imagine all the uh, Mozart's operas uh, and this is basically a little opera. You know, you'll see birds flying around, and, uh, and you see uh, very, very beautiful girls, and, and some naughty guys. You know, so you, it, it's it's a f kind of a family drama. You know. <laughs> <laughs> So you were being very humble because actually that competition that you played in age five, you went on to win. And we all know what happened next. You had a, a rather successful career for a couple of decades. And then something terrible happened a few years ago. An injury struck your hand and it was very difficult for you to play. And this is the first album that you've recorded in three years and the first sort of public statement to emerge after that very difficult period. And I wondered if you could talk to us a little bit about that, about that period and how this album emerges from that. Mm, yeah, I mean, in a way that, you know, sometimes uh, things happen, you know, you cannot uh, really predict. And for me, it was a uh, kind of a good break that um, I can, uh, you know, do more exercise and to uh, balance my life a little bit and listen to all sort of different type of music. And most importantly, to have time to teach a little bit, uh, teach a lot, actually. Um, and. Uh, visiting uh, public schools around uh, New York uh, and also back home in China. So yeah, so and it was really fast. One year, it was kind of like comes really, uh, really fast. And then last July, I made a comeback uh, concert in Tanglewood. And then uh, I feel now like a newborn baby. <laughs> <laughs> How have these pieces helped you in your recovery, would you say? Um, I suppose to record this any case, you know, I supposed to do those uh, uh, repertoire already. But of course, um, when I had more time to reflect, it, it comes through more reflected interpretations. So uh, some kind of a nice memory uh, uh, moments in those uh, interpretation in the recording studios. Well, you mentioned that here in downtown New York, it's rather rainy tonight. We're going to hear a raindrop prelude by Chopin. But first of all, tell us what you're going to play next. And it's yes. a, a um, special reason. Yeah, so the next piece I'd like to play, this is a piece called uh, uh, Reverie from uh, WC. Uh, and recently, this piece became pretty hot because of the what, what the West uh, World, uh, the, you know, the, you know the, the, the TV show. Um, anyway, so. That's, 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 that's less important. The, the important thing is th this music is really beautiful. It's like a dream. And uh, tonight I have uh, my uh, godmother sitting there, Nora Benari. Um, and uh, I want to yeah, I wanna dedicate this piece to you, Nora, and uh, for your great uh, care and love. Um, and uh, so here, here we go. Debussy, Reverie. Thank you so much.
Reverie by Claude Debussy, performed for us live in the green space and on WQXR by Lang Lang, who now will play the raindrop prelude by Chopin. <laughs>
very close this incredibly intimate and wonderful recital, Lang Lang, performing Chopin's Prelude in D-flat major, Opus 28, number 15, known as The Raindrop. Lang Lang, thank you so much. Who would like to hear a little bit more from Lang Lang? Anyone? I did make him promise that he would give us an encore, and he just whispered that he was going to do two. Tell us what we're going to hear. Yeah, so, I mean, we've got enough slow pieces tonight. You know, let's get something fast, you know? So I will do uh, two pieces. Uh, one is uh, called the Cherny Etude. And I, you know, I mean, how Cherny is, you know, uh, my next door guy always hate me practice that piece. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I almost, I always play like six o'clock in the morning, you know? So I, I was his wake up call. So, so I want to actually dedicate this piece to, to him, actually. <laughs> Th thanks for his, uh, you know, his time listening to me, you know, so now I can play faster than before. <laughs> name is the school of velocity and I think you just proved that yeah yeah I mean almost like a flight bomb movie um turning style uh and next one I'd like to play another one of my favorite pieces called a spinning song by Mendelssohn spinning 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 Dazzling close this recital from Lang Lang. We so appreciate you performing for us today. And for our listeners on WQXR 105.9 FM, if you want to hear more of those pieces and others that started Lang Lang on his piano journey, for which we're all so grateful, his new album is called The Piano Book, and it's out now. Thank you again, Lang Lang. <laughs>